Welcome to the global defense battle. The Prithvi-2 missile is an Indian short-range ballistic missile developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, for India's strategic forces. It was designed for quick and precise strikes, focusing on hitting targets with high accuracy. Prithvi-2 was inducted into service in 2003, aiming to enhance India's defense and offensive capabilities. On the other hand, North Korea's Scud missile is part of a series of missiles based on older Soviet technology. The Scud missile, originally developed by the Soviet Union as the R-11, was first inducted in 1957. North Korea began producing its own versions of the Scud missile in the late 1970s and early 1980s, after acquiring technology and components from the Soviet Union and Egypt. North Korea developed it for short to medium range attacks, mainly as a countermeasure and a tool for regional influence. And today, we will compare both of these missile, India's Prithvi-2 versus North Korea's Scud missiles. So let's start. Talking about the design first, the design of the Prithvi-2 missile emphasizes simplicity and efficiency, using a single-stage liquid-fueled engine that allows for controlled and adjustable thrust during flight. It has four tail fins at the rear, which provide stability and control during its trajectory. These fins help guide the missile accurately toward its target by making fine adjustments mid-flight. It is about 9 meters long, has a diameter of approximately 1 meter, and weighs around 4,600 kilograms. On the other hand, North Korea's Scud missile design is based on the Soviet R-17 Elbrus model, also known as the Scud-B. It follows a straightforward layout, similar to early ballistic missile technology with a single-stage liquid-fueled engine. The Scud missile also has tail fins, usually four in number, which aid in stabilizing its flight. The Scud variant used by North Korea generally measures about 11 meters in length, with a diameter close to 0.88 meters, and it weighs around 5,900 kilograms. While Prithvi-2 focusing on compactness and accuracy, the Scud relies on a traditional heavier build with modifications to suit North Korea's defense strategies. Coming to the propulsion and performance, the propulsion system of the Prithvi-2 missile is based on a single-stage liquid-fueled engine. It uses liquid fuel, specifically a combination of red-fuming nitric acid as the oxidizer and unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine as the fuel. This combination allows for a controlled burn, providing the missile with the ability to adjust its thrust during flight, which helps in achieving precise target engagement. Prithvi-2 can reach speeds of up to Mach 1.5. The missile has a range of up to 350 kilometers, and its maximum altitude is about 30 kilometers. Prithvi-2 has only one stage, making it compact and easier to deploy quickly. On the other hand, North Korea's Scud missile series, especially the Scud B variant, also uses a single-stage liquid-fueled engine, similar to the Prithvi-2 but with older technology derived from Soviet designs. It uses a combination of kerosene as fuel and nitric acid as an oxidizer. This type of fuel is less advanced compared to what Prithvi-2 uses, but it is simpler to produce and maintain. The Scud missile can achieve speeds around Mach 5, making it much faster than Prithvi-2. Its range varies depending on the version, but the typical Scud B variant has a range of approximately 300 kilometers. However, North Korea has developed longer range variants like Scud C, which can travel up to 500 kilometers. The altitude for a standard Scud missile can reach up to 50 kilometers giving it a higher flight profile compared to Prith V-2. Coming to the payload and warheads, the Prith V-2 missile is designed to carry a versatile range of payloads, giving India flexibility in its defense strategy. It can carry both conventional and nuclear warheads. The payload capacity of the Prith V-2 is up to 1,000 kilograms, allowing it to accommodate different types of warheads, such as high explosive or fragmentation warheads for conventional strikes, as well as nuclear warheads for strategic purposes. The nuclear warheads used on Prith V-2 have an estimated yield ranging from 10 to 20 kilotons, similar to the power of the atomic bombs used during World War II. However, Prith V-2 is not designed to carry multiple warheads. The destruction radius of a Prith V-2 missile carrying a nuclear warhead can reach up to 1.5 to 2 kilometers in diameter, depending on the yield and explosion conditions. On the other hand, North Korea's Scud B variant also has the ability to carry different types of warheads. It can deliver both conventional high explosive warheads, chemical warheads, and nuclear warheads. The payload capacity for the Scud B is around 985 kilograms, similar to Prith V2, but some variants like Scud C might carry slightly heavier payloads, up to 200 kilograms. 
The nuclear warheads developed for the Scud series are believed to have yields in the range of 10 to 50 kilotons. Like Prith V2, the Scud missile does not have the capability to carry multiple warheads. The destruction radius for a Scud missile carrying a nuclear payload can vary from 2 to 3 kilometers. Considering the larger yield possibilities and the high altitude detonation designed to maximize impact. Let's talk about guidance and accuracy. The Prithvi 2 missile uses an advanced guidance system that combines inertial navigation with an onboard computer to maintain accuracy during flight. Inertial navigation involves using gyroscopes and accelerometers to calculate the missile's position and velocity, allowing it to follow a preset trajectory towards its target. While Prithvi 2 does not rely on GPS, its system is designed to provide a high level of accuracy. The missile has a circular error probable of about 50 meters. Prithvi 2 also has limited maneuvering capability during flight, which is achieved through its tail fins and thrust vectoring, helping it adjust its path slightly to maintain accuracy and evade minor obstacles or air defense systems. On the other hand, the North Korean Scud B primarily uses an older inertial guidance system, which is less accurate compared to modern technologies like GPS. The inertial system in the Scud calculates its position based on initial launch parameters and the missile's speed and angle, but it cannot update its position during flight. As a result, the Scud has a lower accuracy rate, with a CEP ranging from 300 to 1,000 meters, depending on the version and modifications. Unlike Prithvi 2, the Scud missile has minimal maneuvering capability. It follows a ballistic path after launch with limited ability to correct its course, which makes it more vulnerable to interception by modern missile defense systems. We, we look at the launch platforms. The Prith V-2 missile uses a mobile launcher vehicle known as a transporter erector launcher. The TEL system allows the missile to be transported to various locations and launched from different sites, providing flexibility and mobility. The response time for Prithvi 2 is relatively quick. The mobile launcher can be set up and the missile can be fired within a short period, typically in minutes. This rapid deployment capability is crucial for India's strategy, allowing it to respond swiftly in case of a threat. On the other hand, North Korea's Scud missile also uses a mobile TEL platform, similar to Prithvi 2, which was originally based on Soviet designs. However, the preparation time for a Scud missile launch can be longer compared to Prithvi 2 as it requires careful fueling and setup, which might take up to 30 minutes or more. Despite the longer setup time, the mobile capability still provides flexibility and allows the missile to be hidden and launched from various locations. Talking about the cost, the development cost of the Prithvi 2 missile was part of India's Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, which began in the 1980s. The entire program, which included various missile systems like Agni and Akash, had an estimated budget of around $350 million. It is difficult to isolate the exact development cost for Prithvi 2 alone. The production cost per Prithvi 2 missile is estimated to be around $2 million. This cost includes manufacturing, assembling the components, and testing the missile to ensure operational readiness. North Korea's Scud missile development costs are not as clearly documented, mainly because the country initially based its Scud program on Soviet technology. North Korea reverse-engineered Soviet-made Scud missiles, so the development costs were much lower compared to India's approach with Prithvi 2. The estimated production cost per Scud missile, depending on the variant, ranges from $1 million to $1.5 million, which is slightly lower than Prithvi 2. The Prithvi 2 missile is actively deployed by the Indian Army as part of India's strategic forces. The exact number of Prithvi 2 missiles in active service is not publicly disclosed, but it is estimated that India maintains a stockpile of around 75 to 100 missiles ready for deployment. As for exports, India has not exported the Prithvi 2 missile to any other country due to its policy on missile technology control and the sensitive nature of nuclear capable systems. While North Korea's Scud missile program has produced several hundred units over the years, it is believed that North Korea has approximately 600 Scud missiles, which include different variants such as Scud B and Scud C. North Korea has also been known to export Scud missiles to other countries, including Iran, Syria, and Libya, as part of its arms trade strategy. The exported versions usually have limited modifications based on customer requirements. In conclusion, the comparison between India's Prithvi 2 and North Korea's Scud missile shows the different approaches each country has taken in developing its missile capabilities. This comparison highlights how each nation balances technology, cost, and operational readiness to meet their specific defense needs, making these missiles important symbols of their military strength.
Which missile do you think has the edge in modern combat scenarios? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for today's comparison. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more defense updates and comparisons. See you in the next video.